Hi. So, I hope everyone is having a great, great week and we're getting into the weekend. So now, craft shows, craft fairs, and all kind of a shows are around the corner. Most of them already start down the south, that is a little hotter. And one of the biggest things that is always in mind is why should I waste material on a task grid? And the answer is you are not actually wasting material. What you are doing is trying to find what is the best setting that actually going to work for you. And there is no one who can give you nothing but a starting point with their settings. When I post something on social media, a lot of people says, okay, give me your settings. And I always say the same thing run a power test a power speed test why the main reason of it is the settings that i use might not work for you and the best thing to do is always test your material so you have a 12 by 12 piece of wood and you are going to do different earrings and cutting earrings use just a little portion of that 12 by 12 to check your settings and that will tell you how that batch of wood that you got is going to work wood is a natural material therefore is not consistent for all of us in the same and sometimes even in the same batch you will have one or two that you hit a fiber on the wood that won't cut or has too much glue there's a, something that we call glue pockets uh, materials with glue, materials, natural materials, they're different for all of us. So that means that you need to test the material. You need to try to find a happy medium that works for you. So I'm going to do the first video is going to be for Excel created space. And it's because a lot of people have been asking me on specifically the F1. The same apply for any laser on Xtool with this software. The next video will be for Lightburn, uh, and then we're gonna visit some websites to see how that works. So let's focus on that, and let's jump head first into this. Now, uh, we are in Excel created space. So I'm going to select the rectangle here and create a little rectangle uh, to start with our test array or grid test so i'm going to select engrave go to array material test array and you will have this window that has the power that is under you will see the percentage and the speed that is on the left hand so basically it's an x y area so in this case i have you know five columns for my power so you'll see the columns there and also the, you need to remember the columns are in this case X. Now I have here for Y uh, which is a speed I have the rows so I'm going to shrink the spacing that will make the area a little bit smaller so I want to do it also on the Y. So you see here the little gap in between the blocks are smaller. I'm going to click OK. And this is ready to just send to the laser. In this case, I create this example using the S1. Uh, but the same apply for X2 D1, X2 F1, P2, you name it. So is this one is the engraving test array so it will say engrave now i'm going to create a little circle this one is going to be used for the cut test so i'm going to put this one here i've been a little picky on how i create it doesn't need to be that exact you don't need to select any power or any speed on the beginning go again to array material test array and you have basically the same parameters. One of the things that I found here is, you know your laser, you know what is the minimum speed that you use 
for cutting and what is the minimum power. So knowing that, you don't need to start from the minimum 10. You can go straight for the minimum power that you are going to use to test the material. So in this case, it's 60 for me, which is a three millimeters plywood. And the speed, I prefer to start from five millimeters to probably just a hundred. Uh, if you wanna go faster, faster. 200 for now, click OK. Once you have that done, I'm gonna try to match a bit the size, just because, why not? And that's it, that's all you need. You can run this test, save it, keep it at hand and run it over your materials as many times as you need. So now that you have your test on your software, you can save it, play with different things. You can use different other stuff on your test images and all that, as you saw. I use a couple of shapes, a square and a circle, but you can use different other stuff as well. Uh, you're going to be more familiarized with your laser than anyone else. Anyone can say anything on the post when you have a question about power and speed. But the only person that really knows how your laser work is going to be you. So like you saw, for example, I was doing the speed test and I go on the cutting and I decide to go from five millimeters per second, you know, to 100 millimeters per second, even though the machine is capable to go to 500, 1000 or 2000. I know that it won't cut more than in 100 speed. That means when you create your settings, be aware of how your machine works so you don't waste time and waste material at that point because you're doing tests that are meant to fail. So pay attention to your machine, learn about your machine behavior, learn about different materials. With the time you will get a specific starting point. So. You want to cut a material and you have already an idea what happened when you cut a plywood, what happened when you cut something else. That means that you have a point to start your new testing or just go ahead and do it and probably do it the second time it didn't work. But at least you know how your machine behaves. So as always, click a thumbs up, like the video, that helps us a lot subscribe to the channel and if you have any comments or you want to know something else leave it in the comments below fire the laser